Hello, this is Kim Nelson. Uh, in this uh, Rhino tutorial video, we'll be discussing how to um, maquette, uh, do a brief sketch for a prong setting for uh, three different stone shapes. Uh, this tutorial will help you understand how to do some basic maquetting for wire work uh, jewelry treatments. It will also help you understand how you actually design um, or develop a prong setting. I will begin by doing a boated prong setting, which is what you would use for a solitaire treatment. Um, the same technique can be applied to straight prongs. So that would be the easier way, but I would like to have the uh, have you have the experience of working a boated pronged setting. So um, this is the file um, that you will have been provided to work from. It has the stones here at the bottom and the rest is a fairly standard uh, template for me. I'm going to ungroup this so that I have separate access to uh, the girdle line. I may have to ungroup it a couple of times. There we go. I'm going to copy that to the clipboard and then I'm going to undo the grouping and paste it back in so that I have it separately. This is the stone diameter, obviously. Um, the first thing we're going to create is the under bezel and the prongs. Okay. The under bezel for a prong setting cannot be wider than the stone at any point. You don't want to see it when you're looking straight down at the stone. The prongs uh, will vary in size depending on the treatment that you're doing, um, i.e., uh, is it handmade, is it cast, is it one of a kind, is it for production? Um, and also, once again, price point. Um, for a fine setting, you want it to fit one stone precisely. For a more commercial setting, you want it to have more flexibility. We're going to go for a handmade type setting or effect. It'll be CAD, but the effect will be what you would be trying to get from a handmade setting. To maquette the prongs, first thing you want to do is set up a um, beads. I make those using a sphere center radius quad snap. And I will lay these out initially on the cruciform because it's easier. Uh, when you actually design a prong setting, you rarely want to do that. Um, and I'm going to start with uh, the maximum that I would consider to be an acceptable prong, uh, 1.2 diameter. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to array it polar with history. Center of array is zero. Number of items is four. Angle to fill 360 and press enter to accept. And then I'm going to take a look down at those beads and get a sense of how I feel they are um, scale-wise for this stone. Stone is a six and a half millimeter round uh, bridal size. That's not terrible, but I think it is a little oversized. So I am going to scale this using center snap. It's now 1.2. I want to go to 1.1. So I'm going to go uh, in the command line. I'll type in 1.1 backslash 1.2. And that will divide 1.1 by 1.2 and do the scaling automatically. I think that's pretty good. Now I'm going to move the bead in. where I think it should be. Um, for a handmade piece, you generally want to go between a third and a half into the bead. Uh, commercial, you would be more like 25%. Uh, okay, this is for maquetting. This is not for a finished mounting. It's important to clarify the difference. I would build this setting differently if I were going to have it printed and cast. You need more tolerance than this, if you're going to do it for that. 
in fact, now that I think that through, uh, there's, you know, it's different. For a maquette, you want to see how it looks. Um, for a finished model, it, you need it to function. So I'll simply show you what it would be for a finished model. For a finished model, you want it to just kiss the stone. Bite you never so slightly. That would be the appropriate amount of bite into the into the prong you would want for something you're making for casting. Okay, printing and casting. But for a maquette, which is to show you how things look, this is fine. I no longer need um, the other prongs or beads. I want to put a center uh, point inside of this. So standard point object center snap. And I will select the bead and the point and group them together. So that's the first step. Second step, I'm going to take this copy of the girdle line I have, and I am going to lower it down a little ways and change it to red. Generally, if a wire setting, you want it to be roughly the same wire diameter throughout the setting. There's no reason to make it different. Um, so I'm going to create a circle to represent that diameter right here. And I'm going to move this in. Before I do, though, I'm going to create a straight line at the quad of this. I am now obviously not in the front uh, top seaplane, that's top. Um, I am currently in right seaplane, or sorry, front seaplane. F enter. I'm going to group these together for a minute. And I'm going to take a look at it because this is going to give me an idea of just how big that wire is, which will help me reassess the size of the prong. I'm going to take the prong down in size, uh, transform scale, point, and I'm going to divide 1 by 1.1. 1 .1. I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, so this is a graphic representation of my setting. I'm going to go to the front view, orthographic, and take a look at what I have. You want the top edge of your under bezel for your stone to come one-third, roughly, the way down the pavilion. And you want to have your, your stone's pavilion biting into this. Your under bezel is what creates the seat that your stone sits in. Okay? So um, now that I have that, I'm going to go back to top seaplane. And I'm going to create a circle that cuts through here. I have a couple of choices. I can create the circle that cuts through here. Or, and this is what I'm going to do, record history, solid pipe. Pipe is the surfacing tool you want to use to create the wire. Diameter, not radius. Point for next diameter, same, and there we go. Now that I have that, back into my front seaplane, I can move this down until it roughly centers up upon that um, curve. This is actually more important than that curve, this, this wire, because this will be the actual maquette. Top seaplane, so I can scale that wire. 2D, 3D, doesn't matter because it's a flat curve. Center snap. And 
pull it in. Center snap. Pull it in. You can see that it's almost got my um, pavilion in its grip here. It's a little bit low. So I'm going to move it up. It's a little bit high. That's good. And that is biting into my stone fairly vigorously. So that is a good setup for that rail. I can throw away this reference curve I drew now. Check it from the flat top view to make certain that that under bezel is not visible. And you can see that it tucks in nicely. The next thing for me to decide is how to make the prong wire come down. I'm going to change the color of this and its wire. It's a curve. Put them on a different layer so I can turn them off for a moment. I'm going to draw a straight line down into this point. And high enough that it clears the table by ways there. I'm going to extend this curve by arc to point. When you boat a prong, you want to have a soft arching taper. It should feel like the uh, hull of a ship, which is why they call it boated. The math that I like to use for all of my um, curves that I use in prongs is 4-3. So I'm going to rebuild this right now to 4-3. And say OK. Now this has caused a problem because you can see that this curve reverses itself the other and comes back inward. That means you wouldn't be able to put the stone in. You know, it could end up getting in the way. It usually has to come straight up or outward slightly. Turn on my, phone, uh, my control points. I'm going to take this second point down. Using point snap I'm going to move it up on top of this top point. Leave it selected. Don't click anywhere. M enter to repeat the move command. Click and then holding shift key, I'm going to pull it straight down. Until it's at least at the middle of that stone, uh, of that bead. Maybe a little further down. Now I'm going to turn on the curvature graph. And you can see why I like this curve math. It always gives you a, a nice graceful arced curve. And uh, that's a nice curve wire, a nice uh, prong wire curve. So now the problem is, though, is that, of course, it does not line up with the center of my bead. Because rebuilding it and adjusting it, it's over here, and the bead is over there. The question is, how do you rotate something with precision so that it will come to exactly that point? I will show you. You're going to draw a circle, center radius. You're going to start that circle all the way at the end of the prong wire, and you're going to end it using point snap, snapping to that point. You can think of any rotation as a portion of a circle. We now have the center of the circle here. Where the circle intersects this curve, is an accurate place to begin the rotation, and this point is an excellent way to, to the second point. So this is, will be the center of rotation. This would be first pick point. This would be second pick point. So to do that, I need to have end snap, point snap, and int snap. Rotate, 
starting at the end of the prong wire using intersect to capture it here using point to finish it there and that's complete throw that away and now all I'm going to do is do a um, pipe one millimeter in diameter so make sure it says diameter type in one if it doesn't already have one and in diameter just hit enter to repeat the same dimension and one more time because you don't have any other diameters and that will complete it and you can see that it's exactly the same diameter as that bead the only mistake that I made is I did not use history so I'm going to record history and repeat that command. One at the beginning, one at the end, enter for nothing in the middle, and we're done. Going to change the layer of this. And I'm going to bring back our rail, our uh, underbus. Now the relationship that's important between the prong and the under bezel is that they have to intersect and bite into each other. You don't want it too far out here otherwise it's too fragile and awkward and you don't want it to bite too far in because then it becomes clumsy. Fortunately for me um, this looks pretty good. Um, if I wanted to finesse this I can do so. I would lock the green layer the surface is on so I can reach through it to grab the curve. History will function um, regardless of whether the child object is on a locked layer. And enter for that point. And you can see that by adjusting this I get a nice um, Would like to move these two together to maintain that curvature that I had at the top. And you can see I've moved it away from the bead, which means I will have to go back and re-rotate this. Now I'll move this one separately. and I will call that my new prong wire. So while that came in and, 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 and did a better job of biting into that under bezel, um, once I rotate it back out to where it's supposed to be, circle center radius, picking here, picking the point at the center, taking this curve, doing a transform rotate, starting at the bottom of here, using intersect, and then point. You'll see that I didn't really achieve much. Okay, uh, those relationships are are pretty confined and defined. I am going to actually um, copy this surface to clipboard. Control C that takes it out of Rhino onto the clipboard. Now I'm going to undo so we can see the comparison. Okay, paste this one in. And you can see for all the effort I did, adjusting the prong didn't really do much. Which means, if you want to get a tighter fit here, a more of a bite in, your better option is to use the under bezel. So I can scale that using center snap. And because I have history, that pipe will just go right along with it. Okay, fine. That's, that's, that's not a problem. However, you'll notice now when I turn on the stone, I am really not biting into the stone very much anymore. I'm barely touching it. That's actually okay. I can live with that because after casting, the stone will still sit upon that. 
But if I wanted to be sure, I would then actually have to move the under bezel wire. I'll move the surface real brake history. Move it up a little bit until I get a nice bite into the stone. Okay. And there, I mean, that's fine. It was fine what I had before. I just wanted you to see the exercise that you go through, that this is a relationship scenario where the under bezel has a range where it can fit on the stone pavilion. It has a range as how big it can get. You can see I came close to coming too far out to where it was visible, but I didn't. I stayed good. That there is a boating of the prong, and you can decide how much you want this to be, but you have to make sure that the prong opens outward. It doesn't back inward on itself, or the stone won't drop into the setting, and that the prong bites significantly into the under bezel. So there are things to think about, okay? I'm going to take this curve, copy it. Actually, rather than copy outside of Rhino, I'm just going to pre-select it and use the copy command on the transform tab. Works the same way. Click and then shift to pull it down. And enter when I'm done. This is for the gallery wire, the bottom of the setting. You have the under bezel, the gallery wire, and the prong. I'm going to move that up a little bit. I think that that's about where I want it. I don't want the point of the stone to come through the bottom of this, obviously. I'm going to use a different color. Record history. Solid. Pipe. One. Enter again for none and enter again for the next diameter, and there we go. Now that I have this, I can make some decisions. That's a fairly open and tall setting for this stone. I'm going to move it up a little bit. And down a little bit. It's way out here into the prong. It's actually beyond the prong, so I'm going to scale it, the curve, using center snap. I'm going to scale it inward until I have a relationship down here with the gallery wire that is reminiscent of the relationship I have up here on the under bezel. Maybe I'll move it down just a little bit. And I can take that further in or further out. That's pretty good. You, the center line here on the wire, your center ISO curve, is a pretty good uh, indicator. You don't want to really cross over that if you don't want if you don't have to, but you also don't want to be way out at the edge. These are both fine. This is a little further away, which is to be expected at the top of the setting. This is pretty much right on it, if not biting a little beyond, which is what you expect at the bottom. So these are all the parts. I need to cut this off equal to the bottom of the setting. To find that, I need to be able to use a quad snap to grab this thickness at the bottom. And I don't have any geometry here that will allow me to do that, but I can create it very easily. I'm going to go into my top C plane. And I'm going to pull a section. Make sure my viewport is properly oriented. You can tell when your viewport is lined up properly when you're in perspective viewport um, because the red line here is your XY axis. The positive direction for that is right. Negative is to the left. So the line should be on the right side of 0, 0, 0. The green receding line is your y-axis. Its positive numbers and direction are following back this way. Negative is coming forward. So the green line goes in the positive direction. This is the orientation you want. You want the red to the right coming into the center, green to the top, or moving away from you, depending on your camera angle. Okay, That's important because it's very easy 
to do something like this and then not know where you are and then come back here and think that you're centered up which you are you're now upside up but notice that this is coming towards you now and that's on the left the, the red x axis this is actually correct you can of course model in any orientation you want but it's good to know how to get back to here when you want to I'm going to take this so I was going to do a section so I'll use section command. I will use uh, zero as my beginning point. And I can pull either direction here. I'll pull to the left. Because it's going to give me a cross section straight through. So I ha now I can use the bottom of one of these for quad. I want to do a cutting plane to cut this off. Cutting planes are always perpendicular to the C plane. In fact, you can think of a cutting plane as simply being an extrusion. If I were to go to the front C plane and draw a straight curve from quadrant to quadrant and then use that curve to extrude, which of course would be perpendicular to that C plane, I have the effect of a cutting plane. It's just not the right size. It's in the right place. It's just not the right size. And it took too many steps to do. There's no reason for it to be that difficult. When to get a cutting plane, all I have to do is hit cutting plane, make sure the C plane I have active is perpendicular to the direction that I want it to run, select the object I want to cut, or, or I want to use for the cutting plane, hit enter, and then once again come in and grab quad. I can come to this quad, I can come over here, I can come over here, it doesn't matter as long as I use shift. Because all it's trying to do is establish a direction for the plane. The size of the plane is determined by what you selected to base the cutting plane on. And it will absolutely make a cutting plane big enough to cover this object. And I should have. It worked fine. But I should have selected both of these objects to make sure. And you'll see that it gives a cutting plane that is big enough to cover both of these objects. No matter where I'm at, I can move this all the way to the widest part of the prong, and it's still big enough. So I've got that. I'm going to use this to do a Boolean difference to cut the bottom of this prong off. So I'm going to check my direction, because to do a Boolean difference, I want the surface to point towards the part I want to keep. And that's perfect. It's pointing up towards this portion of the prong. Solid difference. Click on that. And there we go. Last thing I want to do to make sure I get a smooth sort of fill in here is I'm going to fill at the bottom of this. This is a one millimeter diameter prong, so I can't do more than 0.5 radius because it'll meet in the middle. I don't want that much. I'll try 0.4 and see what I get. Type in the radius first, 0.4, enter. Then click the edges you want to fill it. Enter to accept the scene, and then enter again. And that tucks the bottom of that prong nicely into the gallery wire. Now I will take this prong, and the last thing I need to do is I need to cut it off at the proper height. We want this to be half a millimeter above the table, minimum. So I'm going to select this prong. Make sure front C plane is active because I'm going to do another cutting plane. I'm going to want it perpendicular to that front C plane, that vertical C plane. It would work just as well in right C plane. Just needs to be a vertical C plane. Cutting plane. Grab the end. I can pull either way as so long as I'm holding the shift key down. And there we have it. It's cutting that. Now, I'm more comfortable with front, so I'll go back to front. Uh, move this up. 0.5 and take a look and see if I think that that is enough. I believe that it is. Um, now you have a choice. You can crop this prong off flat on top um, or you can cut it off at the angle that it is specifying um, by, the, by the curve inside, normal to that curve. Um, either is fine. If you are going to cut it off normal, uh, the way you would do that would be to get an intersection between these two. So 
you have a point there, then I would throw this away, and I would do curve, circle, around curve. It's hard to see in the way they have this blotted out. Where are you, where are you at here? Circle around a curve. Select the curve. Center of circle will be that point I created. And if I draw that, it'll draw a circle that runs normal or perpendicular from that curve at that point. Surface tools, planar surface from that curve. Select that, trim. And then I could actually either trim it, trim this with the prong, or I can so throw it away, select the prong, and hit solid cat planer holes. Either will work. I'm going to do that again in case you missed it. To create the point of cutting, curve tools, circle center radius, uh, not what I want, but I want to cascade this out from there. Select circle around a curve. Read your command line always. Select the curve you want to make the circle around. Select the prong wire. Click at the point for the center. Pull this out. Hold the shift key down to hold it straight. If you, it's probably good hygiene there. Um, I want to make a surface to cut with, so I can either pre-select this and tap planar surface, or I can hit planar surface first, read the command line, select planar curves to build surface. Planar curves just means flat. All circles are flat. It's worth remembering. All circles are flat. There are many times in Rhino when you want a planar object or a planar surface. Circles are always a flat surface, um, create a flat surface. Triangles, any three-sided uh, closed curve, will also create a perfectly flat object. So trim, delete, solid, or I cannot delete. I'll do it different this time. I'll select this and use trim. Both work. Join these together. Uh, last thing I want to do to finish this setting is I want to do a polar array. So going into the top C plane. Orient myself so I know where I'm at. Red to the right, green to the back. Array polar, starting at zero. Number of items is four. I'll type it in again. Uh, angle to fill, 360. Hit that and enter to accept. And there is the completed boated prong setting. I'm going to select the objects that I am going to Boolean. I'm going to copy them, Control C to clipboard, Control V to paste them back in, Control G to group them, and then I'm going to put them on my storage layer. So using my shortcuts, Control D to change layer. Turn the storage objects layer off. Uh, doing that, I know people have requested that I show it without the shortcuts. So, without the shortcuts, select your elements. The stone is not one of them. You're basically your prongs in your under bezel in your gallery. Edit menu, copy. We'll take it outside of Rhino onto the Windows clipboard. There's Control C. Edit menu, paste. We'll paste it back in, and you can see that is Control V. That's a standard Windows shortcut. Uh, change layer, edit, layers, change object layer, storage objects, enter, group. Um, I think that's under edit as well. Group. Group. 
turn this later off. So either works. I do that as a matter of hygiene because I don't want to lose these parts in case I want to go back and make changes later. So now it's just assembling them. Solid union. I'll start with the rail. Uh, the gallery wire, I should say. Select these three, the four, and the gallery wire. Hit enter. Of course, that breaks history. Do it again. Select this object I've just made, and not the stone. The under bezel. Hit OK. Set the display mode to shaded. Emap it for fun. And there is a basic four prong setting for a round. Okay? So that is the first stone. I'll go ahead and make this the same color as the stone so that I can keep them together. Turn that off. Uh, these are all the construction curves. I don't need them anymore. I'm going to go to the next stone, which is going to be a 10 millimeter, uh, sorry, a 9 by, a 8 by 6. Oh, should I do the pear or the emerald cut? I'm going to do the emerald cut because I may cut bait on the pear. This just don't want this tutorial to take too long. It's the same principles. However, for this, you don't, you don't use round wire on a pear shape. You use square. Okay, so, uh, because it reflects the shape of the, of the stone. So, to do a quick maquette setting for this, and I go to a vertical seaplane, in this case front, surface tools, cutting plane. Absolutely anywhere, just make sure I hold shift key down. I'm going to take this and I'm going to extrude it to create a plate. Solid, extrude, surface. Straight. Now, I should make sure my C plane is perpendicular to the direction I want this to go, which is up and down, and that is the wrong C plane for that, so top C plane. Truthfully, it would have worked because Rhino interprets a flat planar object and creates a, a temporary C plane for your extrusion, but it's really good to develop proper C plane habits, so solid. Extrude surface straight. I want it to come down here, and I want it to be one millimeter. So I'm going to type in minus one. That did not give me what I wanted, so I'm going to type in, instead, I'm going to back up and type in one. Depends on which direction Rhino sees your surface going. That's fine. Now when you extrude a surface, the surface you use to extrude, you can actually delete, because it's been replaced in the extrusion. So there is that. Just like on the round stone, I'm going to move this down till I have about a third. Now, one of the first things you're going to notice is that um, this creates a um, very thick plate at a millimeter. Because when you have squared corners on something, it makes a difference as to how thick it looks. So we're going to take this down to 9 tenths for this stone. To do that, I'm going to transform non-uniform scale. And I'm going to pick a corner at the top. I do not want it to scale anything here, so I'll leave it at 1. Enter. I don't want it to scale. I do want it to scale this direction. I want it to scale from 1 to 0.9. Oh, I happen to know that's 0.9. That's simple math. 90% of 1 millimeter is 0.9. So I can just type that in. Or if I wanted to, once again, I could do the um, equation in the command line. It's going to end up the same way. And I want nothing for the z-axis, so keep it at 1. Because 1 means 100%. I am more comfortable with that. It's a little high. Going to 
going to bring that down. Okay, so now that I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my beads. Circle center radius. Mid. Put it right here. And the diameter for this is going to be 0.9. going to put a point in the center of that for reference center snap select both of these things together I used a window selection so it would only select what was encased in the window captured by the window control G back to top seaplane so I can mirror this from side to side with history and I can mirror them both to the other side with history. Having done that, each time I move this, the others will behave in a similar fashion. Okay? Um, this plate I'm going to put on a different layer for a moment, so we're not looking at too many things at once. So, once again, I want to move this outward a specific distance so that I have the right amount of bite into the prong. Um, so, that's something I, I need to do. I need to calculate. But in order to move it out, I need to be able to move it out correctly at, this, at an angle that is perpendicular to this curve. It has to come straight off of here. How to find that? First, I'm going to hope this stone has a girdle uh, line. It does. That's very fortunate for me, because I stole this from the, la the last minute from my library. I'm going to copy, paste, and put that on a white layer. That was Control-C, Control-V, Control-V. It's just so I can have an extra, so that I can afford to turn the stone off. I'm going to turn the beads off as well for just a minute. And I'm going to go to the top viewport reason I'm going to do this is because the tool we're going to use to create this exact line is curve perpendicular, line perpendicular from curve. Okay, To make sure I'm in the right place, I want to look at that viewport. Look at those beads. Find the one with this point in the middle. That's my master. If I move this one, the rest obey. So I want this corner. If I look at where the y-axis and red axis are here, I can check that they're the same as they are in the top view. I could also get in the top view and just click these till I found the one with the point in the middle. Turning that off. Curve. Line perpendicular from curve. Click both sides. Select mid snap. And then click. And you'll see it creates this marvelous curve. This will work in perspective view too, but the next stage won't. The only thing that will work only way this will work is in a nice flat orthographic view, and that is from first point. That will start that curve right from where you first clicked, which is very useful. There. I have a guideline. I'm going to move this stone out using this like a trombone slide. Move it back in a little bit. About there is fine. And the rest I'll undo and redo so you can see the rest followed along. So there, I've got my beads. I want to keep this curve. It's going to be very important later. I'll put it on the same layer as this outline. Girdle line. So I've got my plate. I've got my beads. Now my plate. Um, it can't be bigger than the girdle of my stone, once again. So I am going to take this curve, and I can use it several different ways. Uh, the easiest in my mind is to project it down onto the top of this and use it to cut, or I can just use an extrusion. and then use that to cut it. 
right? That'll work. I don't want to do that just as yet because I'm not sure if that is where I want it to be. I'm not certain yet. So, I'm going to establish a nice curve for the prong. That's my next step. There's my point. Problem is I don't have a C-plane that lines up with this to draw that curve on. I'm going to create that C-plane now. Surface, extrude, straight. And I'm going to set the C-plane, a custom C-plane, onto that surface. I would like to keep that in my records. So I'm going to hit N, which will bring up named C-planes if you have my uh, keyboard shortcuts. If you don't, click on this window, set C-plane all the way to the bottom. Save C-planes. If you hit the little save icon, you can give it a name. I'll call it prong wire. Now I have that forever available to me. I can throw away the surface. I can go back to top, go to front, go to right, come back to top again. And if I ever want that C plane back to work with it, either use the N enter, keyboard shortcut, or the set C plane. and just select it from the list. Double click, and there it is. Okay. So we've got this. We're going to use the same method we used before. Curve, straight line, coming from that point, going straight up. I want it to go a ways above the girdle of, of the table of the stone. It's a little short. Turn on control point. Just grab the top control point and drag it straight up. Quick way to make it longer. I'm going to do an extend by arc to point. And create something that kind of echoes what's going on with the shape of the stone. That nice boated form. Plenty long enough. Rebuild that to my favorite prong wire, 4-3. Turn on the control points. Drag the second to, second to the top point. Uh, using point snap, going to click on it, put it on top. Keep it selected. Hit the space bar to repeat the command. Click for start. Pull straight down with shift key to keep a nice straight section at the top. I want it to come roughly the same level as the center of that bead. Take this, use it to make a nice arc. Move that maybe out a little bit so it's not too severe. Check it with curve graph. looks good. Now remember, that while this looks like a three-dimensional curve, it isn't. It's on a C-plane. C-plane goes to infinity. It just happens to be a custom C-plane lined up where I want it. Now I need to rotate that into position. So the same thing, uh, reference circle, circle center diameter. We want point, end, and int. Origin, uh, center of circle end of that curve, end of that circle, point, and then rotate. Center of rotation, end of uh, prong wire, and turn the stone on. First point uh, of the angle, intersect snap, end point, point snap. Now as we learned from the other uh, setting, there's not really much point in moving this around a lot. Um, it's pretty much it's, it's set. Um, it's got a nice angle. It comes in around the stone properly. 
it's good. We're not going to really play with that very much. I am going to put a pipe on it, just temporarily, because it's easier to visualize than the bead. So, solid pipe. I will do history just in case I want to change things. Um, solid pipe. And the diameter is 0.9, just like the bead and diameter. Just enter to accept and then enter to accept. So I've got that. And it's coming in here and it's meeting this plate. Back to top seaplane. Nice and straight, no wobble. Very clean little throng. Um, I'm wondering what I did with the um, curve. I thought that was on the white layer. Right here. I no longer see it. Um, this happens, uh, students. You'll have geometry that you're working along with and it just disappears. Now I can pull that back off. I can pull it from here. I can get it back from here. But I had that curve I really liked that I used to make the seaplane. Okay. Um, so I've got to go back and find what happened to it. So I am going to undo until I see it again. It's very dangerous work. You can lose a lot of work this way. There they are. Okay. I want to keep these, so I'm going to Control C or Edit Copy. They're the same. To get it out of Rhino onto the clipboard in Windows. And then I'm going to Control Y to redo. Get right back to where I was. It says nothing to redo. Control V or Edit Paste. There they are. What happened? The only thing that could have happened is that I, when I extruded these, the extrusion was set, had a setting that was very dangerous. Surface tools, extrude. See this option, delete input, yes. If you have that chosen, it will throw away the curve that you make the extrusion with. You really rarely want that. It should usually be no. And that's what happened, is I made extrusions with both of these, and when I did so, it threw the cords away, it threw the curves away. And then I threw the extrusions away, because I was just using them to make a point. Okay? So, that's where they went. All right. I want to come up with something, some way of visualizing where this is going to go. Okay, that's important to me. So, for me to visualize that, I need to have a line or a plane right down the center of this plate. Easiest way to do that is to pick a vertical C plane that I like. Surface, cutting plane, contrasting color, mid snap. The mid of any of these corners will do. All I have to do is hold shift key straight out to the side. And there I have it. Turn off that main surface, go back to top seaplane. This is kind of unwieldy to look at, so I think I'll delete it. I'm going to project this to that curve, or to that surface. Project curves to seaplane. I mean, not to seaplane, to the surface. Uh, delete input equals no. Yeah, we'll leave it so that it just we have a copy down here. The reason it's brown is the color down here is brown. Not a great color for what we're doing. Awesome contrast. Okay, so I've got that. I know that the, the width of this wire is ideally 9 tenths. Okay, so I'm going to do an offset. 0.9. That would be the full width. I actually want half of that, 0.45. And then just pick which side and click. Fortunately, I still have. 
Now, in Rhino 7, I have noticed I get these little unusual decorations at the ends here. That doesn't happen in Rhino 6, so I'm going to take a moment to discover why. It has to be a setting, because this is not a complicated offset. So curve, offset, trim equals no. Change that to trim equals yes. And there we go. Going to create a pipe around this curve, which is half of the diameter we need. So if I do a pipe that is a diameter of 0.9, it should line up perfectly. Diameter, 0.9, same as for the comb. Beginning, end, middle, and there you go. This is, except for I did really want to have that with history. Okay, so now it's getting interesting. That turns out to be a very poor color choice. So now I can look just like I did with the round and evaluate this. It's a little deceiving because this will be a square cross section. So I really want to look at where the widest point is reaching. That is actually going to be okay. It's going to be very close. Because it'll come all the way up. It'll just tick the corner off. I am going to scale this. Top C plane. It's a flat closed curve, so Rhino will be able to find a center for it. I like that better. I like it better for the stone. I like it better for the prong. So that's what I'm going to use. However, scaling isn't the same as offset. We've discussed that when drawing the tables for stones. It, it isn't the same. That's actually a distorted shape. So I'm going to delete. This is indeed the curve that I want. But I need to achieve that same dimension with an offset. There's 0.45, you can see it. Turn off the snap. I'm going to go through point, and I'm going to split the difference. Okay. It's going to be a little bit longer and a little bit uh, narrower. But that will be a true offset. Throw this away. There we go. And if I pipe that quickly just to show you what it looks like. It bites in well at the prong, and it bites in well at the stone. Problem is, is that it really isn't um, the right wire. It needs to be rectangular. It needs to be a plate. I have a wire. Fine. This is how you maquette. This is how you model. Okay. You use reference geometry. Reference geometry is great. This was all just to see if I have the right size and shape, which I do. So now that I have that, throw this away. This is the actual curve that's the center line. Okay, So to get the actual plate dimensions at the middle, at 9 tenths, okay? What I need to do is offset this both sides 0.45. Think about that again. We created this by offsetting from here using the, you know, averaging what we had when we adapted that curve to hug the stone properly. But that's not a 0.45 anymore. If I do an offset curve, 
and I do 0.45, it doesn't reach anymore. Okay? Because we've changed it. We used the pipe to verify where it fits. We did a scale to make it fit better, did an offset to make it true to the proportions and shape of the stone. All of that is great. We just no longer need this curve because it's no longer accurate. It's accurate to the outside girdle of the stone. Perfect. But it's not the right size or location anymore for what we want to do. So I'm going to take the center line, top C plane, so I offset in the right C plane. Because that's the only way it'll work. You know, if I offset in the in the front C plane, it's gonna offset it this way. Actually it doesn't. I love Rhino 7. They've they've changed so many things. Uh, that used to be something that, well, actually it's a closed flat curve, so maybe it would have created a, a temporary custom C-plane. Still, use hygiene. If you want to do an offset that looks like an offset from the top, use top C-plane. Both sides. The distance right now is set to 0 0.54. Type in 0.45. Hit Enter. And then click. And there we go. If it's worked, and it has. But if you ever want to check, check distance mid snap. From here to here should be 0.9. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to teach you a extrusion command now that is very useful. Okay, but we need a couple of references to make sure we don't go crazy. I'm going to project this to the top of this box. I have two ways of doing that. I can do project using top C-plane or I can create a custom C-plane on top of this and project to that C-plane. I'm going to project to the surface using top C-plane as my active C-plane and then I only want to keep the top one. So I'll control click to remove it from the selection and then hit delete to throw away the bottom one. I can now put away that orange plank. This is important because it'll show me that's the furthest out my extrusion can go. Otherwise, it's going to be visible from the top. I'm going to take this curve. And I'm going to extrude tapered. Okay, right now the taper angle is at 15. That's the draft angle. 15 degrees. Um, that feels, um, comparing it to the prong, it's not bad. I'm going to try and come up here and see if it reaches beyond, but you'll see when I come the other way, it flips. It goes the wrong direction. So if I just hit flip angle, it'll may, may retain the same draft angle. I'm going to take a look and see how that interacts with that curve. It's a little too big. So I can't have that draft angle be 15. I am going to hit click, click on draft angle. I'm going to type in 12. It's actually, it was actually a minus. If I come this way, it makes sense. Uh, flip angle. Come up and take a look and see how it's comparing. Now it can be hard to see, right? Because that's a curve, this is a surface. I'm having a hard time visualizing that. So I'm going to escape out. And I'm going to put a planar surface on this. It's a flat, closed curve. It'll take a planar surface, no problem. Then I'm going to return and repeat that command. Flip direction, uh, angle, flip angle. And now I'm going to pull it through and see if I don't see, if I don't see that um, green surface coming out, then it's still too small. The curve is, is the angle is still too high. So do it again. Draft angle, oh, because it didn't change it. Draft angle. 15, set it to 12, and actually I'm going to set it to minus 12. The 
but still if I click that green surface is just about right that's too too close for comfort so I'm going to do it again draft angle is 12 or minus 12 I'm going to set it to minus 10 and click I go full shaded so I can really see. And yes, that's fine. Okay. So now that I've got that, I know that is a good angle to have for the edges of that plate. Because it wouldn't be straight up and down. The prong's tapering, so the plate needs to taper also. So. I'm going to explode this, throw away the top, throw away the bottom. I need to extend the length on these because right now it's at the midline. I need it to go all the way down. So surface extend, surface. Type line. There we go. And I will click on this edge and one should do it yeah that's the distance it was set there it's set to one I accept that enter you want to do them all the same so that they end up more or less the same There we go. Join these back together. Oh, didn't get that one extended. Okay, that's fine. Bring back the orange plate. Now, actually, this green surface is in the exact same place. I'll throw that away. So I've got this. I want to have an object that is this shape, but that thickness. I'm going to put caps on this. So it's a solid. I'm going to do a Boolean intersection. Boolean intersection will create an object that is the intersection of these two objects. Select first set of surfaces or poly surfaces. This one, enter. And then this one, enter. And that creates an object that is the sum of those two parts. So this is done. If I bring in my stone, you will see that it grabs the stone well. From the top, it does not show. At the corners, it's grabbing the prongs well. Okay, so we've got the plate, we've got a prong. Uh, the next plate I have to create is going to come off of this to create the bottom. So I'm going to just take this plate. I'm going to copy it straight down. It'll work as a reference. Vertical C plane. Once again, I want a decent airline in here. I don't want my uh, culet hanging out the bottom. This is a very deep stone. I do this for color, a color maquette, in case the stone's really deep. So. Yeah, that's okay. I think that's fine. So that's the placeholder for the depth that I want. Okay. Top C plane. Now, obviously, this surface isn't big enough now for me to project the top, the girdle uh, down onto, or even this curve down onto. Right? I'll delete that so it's not confusing. Uh, this curve. Any of these that are an offset from this curve, I can't. It's, it's too small, but I can set a seaplane to the top of it, just like that. 
going to grab this curve and I'll project it to that C plane. And no, I do not want to delete the input object. There it is. You can see it is just slightly oversized. I want this to come in to where it bites into this curve for the prong properly. So, offset curve, through point, till it bites about halfway into that prong. That's fine. I am going to do that um, same extrusion, tapered. I'm going to keep the same degree of taper even. But I need to come down this direction and that taper is reversing as I come below the curve. So if I hit F for flip or tap up in here, flip angle, that'll work. I just want it longer than this plate. So any length is fine, as long as it's longer than the plate. I had solid options selected on that, so it gave me solid. I'll show you. In case you missed that. Solid equals yes. And I'm going to use that same intersection, Boolean command. First item, enter. Second item, done. Okay? So, there is that. Now, for a maquette, I don't have any real need to make a window in this. If I want to, I can. It's very easy. Take this curve, offset, top C plane, 0.9. That scale, that's just a rectangular hole. It doesn't have the cut corners anymore. Do the same extrusion, tapered. Solid yes. But instead of doing intersection, do difference. Okay, it works. So only thing I have left to do with this now is to create, well, I can cut a hole in here for the seat if I want to. I may as well. How can I get this curve back? I no longer have it. It's gone. I threw it away. That was dumb of me. How do I get it back? I right-click on Explode. That extracts a surface. Copy equals yes. So I make a copy of this surface. Click and hit Enter. There it is. Come here, Duplicate Border. That creates that line again. And I can throw away the surface because I don't need it. I just need that curve. I can do an offset. 0.9. I can do an uh, angled extrusion, tapered extrusion. Same direction, same degree of curvature, of, of, of angle. Click, pick the top one, solid, difference. Pick the inside one, enter. Stone. So, for a maquette, I didn't have to. I could have just left it without the cutting. But, may as well show you how it's done. So, the last thing we need to do, and in its own way, perhaps the trickiest thing we need to do, is we need to now create a square cross-section wire. Okay? So um, you will recall that we have a C-plane set to this. That's fine. I don't really need that C-plane right now um, so much as I need a C-plane that has this kind of grain to it, that has uh, directionality this way and this way, X and Y, U and V. I need that because I need the squareness of this wire to sympathize with that. And my... C plane that I created isn't going to give me that. I'll show you. It doesn't. Okay, it'll give me a, a curve going this way, but it won't give me one going that way. Okay? 
So, kind of annoying. All right. So, um, but we're going to work around that, and I'll show you how. First thing we want to do is crop this off at the proper height. So, vertical C plane, cutting plane, equal to the top of the table. Move this up at least 0.5. Take a look at what we think. Maybe a little higher for the pretty good size stone. Put an intersection between this and the center wire. It is very cool how um, the circle around curve doesn't care what C plane you're in. It doesn't matter because it's using the curve to create the 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 perpendicular quality of the circle. So curve tools, circle, round curve, point snap. Select curve, grab the point, pull it out, use shift key so it's nice and straight. Uh, surface from planar curves, throw away the circle, use the surface, trim off the top of the prong, and I can either use that surface or throw it away. I may as well use it. Oops. Um, grab this and trim away the circle. Nice. Okay. So we've got what we need. However, it's not lined up properly. I need squares that go like this. And you can see the ISO curves are not in the right direction. I would need a line that follows this and goes perpendicular to this. Don't follow me on making that. There's no need. But a curve that runs this direction, right? That's what I need. And I have no way of getting that. It would appear. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to project this curve onto this surface from the top C plane so it shoots straight up. Delete equals no. So, again, select surfaces, delete input equals no, and there. So I have the one curve. The problem is, to making the other curve is going to be annoying. I can do it. I can, I can do an offset. I can do curve perpendicular from curve. But it's just easier to create another C plane. And the best curve object you can use to create a directional C plane, a C plane that you control the U and the V, the X and the Y, is an oval, an ellipse. But first, we have to have a, plat, a flat C plane to draw the ellipse on, because it needs to be flat. So I'm going to set a C plane to the top of this. You can see that the lines are going in the wrong direction. The grid doesn't match what I need. It's horrible. It's fine. Curve tools. Ellipse diameter. It's important this diameter, so you can capture this direction. The other direction can be as big or as skinny as you want. Do not care. I'm going to select that flat curve now and set a C plane to it. And notice how the grid now lines up perfectly with the axes of that ellipse. That is a very cool trick. It's very important to remember. I'm going to just use this to set my view with the zoom selected. So my camera centers back up. So now that I have this, I can create that square cross section, no problem. Curve, offset, through point, both sides. Quad snap. Draw another straight line, horizontal this time, starting at the point. Both sides, B enter. Shift key. Offset this curve. Through point. Both sides. And you can use end or quad, whichever you want. Just so you snap to the outside of that circle. Use fillet curve to 
it's cleaned it up. And I am going to hit join equals yes. So that each time I do this, spacebar to repeat the command, it joins this together. So there's my cross section. I'm going to use this surface to trim off the top of this wire. So it's the exact length I need. And now I can throw this pipe away. And I can throw this surface away. I can go back to whatever seaplane I want, it doesn't matter. And I can do a one rail sweep. Select rail, select cross section, enter. That's fine for a seam, any corner will work. There you go. Solid cap cleaner holes. And there's the prong. Okay. You'll see that it's nice and straight. It lines up right with the corners of these of your under bezel and your gallery wire. It's biting in good to both. Could use a little more bite down here, but I'm not going to change it. It's fine. Okay. And you can see how much bigger it looks than a round wire. It looks very massive. But it is one, it is uh, nine tenths. Analyze length, pick any edge. It's nine tenths. Oh, oops. I want to pick the surface edge. Point them. Last thing to do is to mirror this around. I could use history, but I'm done, so I'm not going to bother. Now, I could have done this before mirroring. I can do it after. It doesn't matter. I'll group these four together. And I'll create a cutting plane to lop them all off, even with the bottom of the setting. Pick a vertical C plane. Surface tool cutting plane. Catch the bottom corner of this surface anywhere. Go to wireframe if you need to so you can see it. Oh, and have N-Snap activated, so you can actually click on it. Pull straight to the side, either way. Make sure that this is pointing towards what you want to keep, which is the upper prong. It's pointing the wrong way. Click on Flip, and hit Enter when done. Select your group prongs, solid difference. Select the flat surface, and there you go. I'm about to do a Boolean union, so I'm going to select pieces. Uh, edit copy, or control C. Edit paste, or control V. Edit group, or control G, change layer, change object layer, or control D, storage. That way we don't lose anything. Solid union. Pick the prongs, pick the gallery, uh, the under bezel, sorry, pick the prongs, Pick the gallery wire. Turn this off for a minute. Turn this off for a minute. All this construction work. I can delete it. Don't you, in your own files, always keep that work. Uh, put it on a curves or storage layer. But there we go. And if I email this, it's a nice, rough little setting. for an 8 by 6 emerald cut.
uh, make a little room here, put it side by side with the round so you can see. Oh, it looks like I still have pieces. And there are your two settings. Okay. That's it. Thanks for watching.